Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Samuel. I'm really, I'm really delighted to be here, and uh, thank you to join us in this uh, cold and busy week. I really appreciate the uh, here. Uh, I, I will I, I will be very brief uh, before introducing Sim uh, by giving you a, a, a brief overview of uh, of Tunisia. Uh, my country, Tunisia, is the perfect example of a country at crossroads. So we, we, we it's quite developed our country with a population of 10 million. Uh, GDP per capita of $7,500 when you take into account the processing power. So that's quite, quite good I mean, for, for, for the region. And that's the double of GDP of Morocco, GDP equivalent to of GDP of Turkey. Uh, Tunisia has the highest development index. Uh, it's an index that takes into uh, that integrate life expectancy, literacy, education, standard of living. And Tunisia SGI has been rising uh, during the last 10 years and uh, stays today at 0 0.75 versus 0 0.7 for the whole Arab world. Uh, we have a quite fair distribution of wealth among the population. Uh, the Gini indicator standing at uh, zero at 39.8 versus 40 for the US and 43 for Turkey. And probably one of the most uh, impressive achievements in the country is the particular focus on expanding women's rights, making Tunisia a real case in point and an exception in the Arab world. Tunisia today is among the top 45% most developed country in the world. And it's really an achievement when you when you see where the country standed at uh, its independence in 1956. Now, when it comes to, to freedom of speech, when it comes to press and citizen participation, Tunisia is falling and lagging behind. The country is classified not free by the Freedom House. The situation is judged very serious by reporter without border. And the country is among the 12% most closed society in the world, according to the World Bank governance indicator. WikiLeaks uh, quoted recently the US ambassador saying Tunisia has big problems, the regime is chaotic, and many Tunisians are frustrated by the lack of political freedom. Uh, another quote is Christina Koch from, uh, from Fried, which is a, a, a Spanish uh, think tank, who wrote recently, Tunisia human rights activists are harassed by the Secret Service agent and politicians from the opposition and their family are openly followed and threatened. YouTube and major video sharing sites are censored. This gap between our level of development relative development. And the situation of freedoms is no more acceptable. Groups and movements have been rising, advocating more freedom, and believing that further development won't be possible without opening the political sphere. Takriz, Birsa, Nawet, and other movements, like Sebsal, have been quite innovative and clearly brave to make their voice heard. Now, what next when people are waiting for time of change? Are these movements going to merge into a wide and organized political movement, the only capable of bringing change? That's the question we are going to address tonight. And how to start a social movement and what makes us successful or not? Uh, I would like, without further ado, to introduce Sim, uh, who, who, who is one of these Tunisian brave uh, activists who fight censorship despite repression, despite risks. So please join me to, to, to welcome Sim Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you, first. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, uh, first, I'm really glad to be here uh, among you. 
Uh, and I would like to uh, thank the sponsors for giving the, me the opportunity to speak at this great university, especially to, uh, to thank uh, Ferris for inviting me. Um, I will tell you uh, the story uh, and uh, what happened actually, because uh, probably you don't know why I am here actually. Um, on May 2010, me and a friend tried to organize a march against internet censorship in Tunisia. That march was due to for May 22, but unfortunately, on May 21, we got arrested. A knowledge by the police officers that our march was illegal. They did not give a reason and forced it to cancel the march and sign a commitment not to do it again. But even though the march did not happen, we and most observers felt we succeeded in some way, given the context. Because you have to know that even though in Tunisia, demonstration is a constitutional right, no individual citizens before us enacted this right. Before us, all the demonstrations attempts were made by political parties. And all the actual demonstrations that happened were organized by the same ruling party since 1956. This we knew later, after the end of the non-event. And the reason is, there is a general climate of fear in Tunisia. People fear government, and government fears people. There is this dreadful lack of trust, which is the root of our evil in societies. Few dare to confront the government because of fear of retaliation. Not so long ago, we've been hearing stories about torture and mistreatment. We have, we have not been tortured, thankfully. So why we did it? I can speak for myself. I thought it, it was the right moment to take responsible risk and reasonable risk. The reasoning was, internet users in Tunisia are about a third of the population and among the most educated and wealthy part of the population. So they both did not reach critical mass and are the population which represents the lesser security risk for the government. Then the importance of the internet and its power is still not very well understood among stakeholders of the government. The internet is still considered by them more of a toy. They simply don't take it seriously. And thus, I think, and I was right, they won't overreact. It was the right time. But the most interesting part is probably how we did it. It all began in April 2009. There was this wave of incomprehensible censorship that hit most, the most interesting blogs in Tunisia and major French speaking online news channels. And most video sharing platforms as well around the world. Someone posted on Twitter a photo of him with a poster saying, end censorship, Sayyid Salah, which means in Tunisian dialect, both leave us alone and enough. Then someone else did the same thing and posted it. It soon became a meme, unleashing the creativity of people. And soon someone created a website collecting these photos, and someone else created a Facebook page for the same photos. The, waste, the, the website and the page, Facebook page got censored very quickly, of course. 
but the impact was there. National and international online press followed the dawn, and the campaign got visible. And two or three of the most known online news channels chose my photo to illustrate their articles. It's a photo of me holding a poster saying simply 404, which is the symbol of page not found, this symbol. In front of the building of Tunisian Agency of the Internet, which is the agency responsible for the Internet of Tunisia. It was probably for aesthetic reasons and for the simplicity and the cross culturality of the message, only numbers and no Arabic scripts. But this is what got my personal visibility, which led people preparing for organizing a demonstration elsewhere on the internet to ask me to join them. It is important here to acknowledge that the idea of the demonstration is not mine. I just embraced it when I got the opportunity. This is a fundamental idea behind organizing with the help of the internet. Following, copying, imitating, joining is the key.